Hi, this is Big Geek and I'm Dan. Welcome back to the workshop. This video is hopefully going to center around what is in this box. Um, as if you've been following this channel, you'll know I recently got a lathe and a mill and I'm sort of journeying into an experience of learning how to use those tools to make things. And one of the things that occurred to me was it would be a good idea to take an established project that someone else has laid out the parts and the design and the measurements and just try and go through that. So there's a company here in the UK called uh, Hemingway Kits and uh, I bought myself it's a it's like a clockmaker's vice, I believe the the term is. So let's get this open and uh, see what this is about. And just like that, this is what we've got in the box. So the main part, I guess, is this cast iron casting of what is the body, um, and we have a few sections of rectangular bar stock and square bar stock. What I assume looks kind of like stainless, a couple of stainless rods and various bar types in what I would imagine is closer to a mild uh, and a couple of screws. And of course the all important instructions with various dimensions and such. Now I will say, uh, and I was aware of this going in, all of these instructions have imperial measurements <laughs> and I'm very much a metric boy. So what I'm probably gonna do is study these and what I might actually consider doing is remodeling them and choosing metric equivalents of all this stuff. Um, I suspect the main places it might kind of cause me problems to work in Imperial is any of the screw threads. I'm not really geared up to do any Imperial screw threads um, and all my drills and everything are metric. So yeah, that is the plan. So yeah, hopefully uh, this will be an interesting uh, experience and uh, let's get to it. So I think we should play a game which is spot all the things that I had to buy or make <laughs> in order to complete this fairly interesting and complicated project. Here we have uh, a reamer, not the right size reamer, I can't remember why I stopped at that size, I, I obviously needed to make the hole bigger as well which I did later, but these two jack clamps, uh, jack stands, whatever they're, whatever they're called, uh, I um, made those, they turned out to be perfect for this kind of operation where the majority of the bulk is off the, the side of the vise, provide good support. So, I already had the DRO on the lathe, but uh, very useful for these kind of operations, keeping a very close eye on meeting the same length every time and uh, hitting that diameter. Well, this is a pretty crucial part, it's the main the main kind of pivot pin for the for the vice clamp. Uh, so yeah a lot of checking and rechecking as I slowly work my way down to size. And that my friends, that is a fit. This was a very satisfying moment early on. was made to part off. <laughs> didn't quite get all the way through, uh, but it did just come off very easily. I found myself digging for every size drill bit that I could find to try and get myself close to size before breaking out the boring bar. Um, this is definitely the biggest drill bit I own. boring bar just to fettle things into the, the final diameter. This was useful in this situation to also be able to kind of keep checking against the actual part it was going to meet against. So whilst I do have the ability to measure, there's nothing quite like measuring up against the real part. 
Yahtzee. <laughs> Ugh, terrible out of focus shot. So continuing our game, here we have <laughs> a, a V-block to, to provide better clamping for round services. Definitely had to acquire that for this project. And some parallels, although I think they may have already got those, they're fairly essential to milling. Uh, and obviously this is an operation that can really only be done with a DRO, uh, kind of finding the center of this part and then just plotting out the holes, uh, holes in quotes, <laughs> for each position here as we work around to create the notches for the handle. Oh, and of course, that is a 12mm uh, end mill with a 12mm uh, R8 collet holding it, uh, also newly acquired. The idea with the handles is that you kind of create enough of those uh, edge, <laughs> I don't even know what to call it, it's not really knurling, edge uh, indents to be able to do both handles and then part off and shape the first handle and then you can kind of reposition and, and use the last without having to repeat that same operation. Using the compound slide to dial in the angle for this sort of dishing effect at the top of the handle. I do at least occasionally remember to put down a kitchen roll to uh, prevent abrasive dust getting on the ways. Now here I'm tapping, uh, it's a pretty large thread size to tap actually, but um, I tried using this sprung metal punch as kind of a poor man's tap follower uh, and it sort of worked but it was a bit wobbly at that distance so I did end up making my own which I think we'll see later and here just making a a quick kind of clamping ring for the handle to surface the back of it and purchase list goes up to three four uh, <laughs> the slitting saw also newly acquired for this project um, mostly just to do this. I've used it for a bunch of things since, but um, it's quite useful. I probably should have cleaned more meat out in the middle of this. It was very difficult to clamp it down hard enough, and I kept kicking the handle out. Uh, I think I edited all of that out, so it looks like this worked perfectly first time. It didn't. <laughs> Another satisfying moment to uh, screw this on. Ready to start cross drilling for what sort of the main fixed uh, is the pillar of the of the clamp of the vice. Working our way up through drill sizes, and then another newly purchased reamer. This is an imperial reamer because one of the components I got with the kit was a half inch kind of already prepped bar stock, um, and so. I needed to get the reamer to match. I did try and do as much as possible in metric. All of the threads I made metric. But if I'm going to get like precision ground imperial diameter rod, then I bought the reamers to match. Another little project that was built for this: the, the lathe mounted die holder to make uh, this sort of threading operation easier on the lathe works great. Good beginner project. Oh, and of course. The ER32 collet chuck <laughs> and the ER32 collets also purchased to make this job easier. And indeed some Imperial collets to make holding this Imperial bar easier. And here we're just cleaning off the bottom of the main fixed vice block, um, ready to drill and tap for the, the rod that, that goes into it.
Ah, and now my newly made sprung baby tap are much better than the metal punch. Uh, another great little beginner project. Uh, it, was a, it was a pleasant sort of afternoon's work just to, to knock that up, but it definitely made these operations much easier to do. much of the machining of this block and its holes, but uh, this was probably the trickiest part. This is turned between centers, the main drive screw thread. This is my first time turning between centers with a lathe dog, uh, also new purchase and single point threading. Uh, the first time doing that on the lathe. It was fiddly and I, if I recall I did end up running a die down both those threads to, to clean them up anyway, but it uh, worked out well. This complicated setup of strap clamps and V-blocks and whatnot to create the V-grooves in the fixed face. Um, this worked very well, I just sort of dial indicated the one 2 3 block into parallel with, uh, with the machine and then I can put the V-block up against it. Uh, I did, however, completely miscalculate this center vertical line, which is about one width, <laughs> too far to one side. I will have to remake it, but uh, it looked pretty good. Here we're working on the moving jaw side, getting the, the tap holes and the reamed hole correct for the for the vice jaws before moving on to shape it to its final um, layout, which is kind of a T-shape. Oh, another new purchase, boring head. Uh, you need to create this sort of little recess because the, the main screw thread is essentially clamped between a, a, a wide part on it, which you would have seen in the previous part, and the uh, handle that's threaded onto the back side and then locked tight in place. And that diameter was very precise and obviously I didn't have any kind of drills or end mills of that size. So boring head, completely justifiable purchase. And here we're just milling out that T-slot shape um, for that jaw. Lines and that recessed part of the jaw, which is critical to the to the thread, and just chamfering off the back edge. I actually, laser cut some angle blocks to make that possible to do a 45 degree. Just laser cut a bunch of acrylic ones to help setting up specific angles in the vise, which work really well. And just lock tightening in place the kind of the main precision rod of the moving jaw. Very satisfying fit. It's very it's the great thing about machining when you do get it right is it actually it's quite satisfying to have these very precise fitting components. And there you can see what I was talking about with the the screw thread and how it's captured in this moving jaw with the handle and that uh, flared disc. Now I did lock tight this in place um, but actually I ended up going back and putting in a grub screw just to hold it really tightly. No new tool in the workshop will be complete without a quick coat of paint, basic undercoat, and uh, of course, as should probably shock no one, a little splash of yellow. What may not be apparent from this video is about, I'm going to say, eight or nine months has passed through the production of this. Not all spent on this, obviously, but, you know, life happens, things need to be done. Uh, I was taking it slowly. Here we are. We are finally finished. Let's take a closer look at the parts. 
so this was the first main piece the main casting so for this I flattened uh, these to parallels cleaned up this uh, this looks a bit of a mess because I painted it and then immediately put it in a rusty uh, vice but so you know there was a certain amount of milling this I think I lost the footage of that part uh, but then setting this up to center a hole as well as possible bore it to the correct dimensions uh, that all went pretty well then this is the main shaft so this bore had to meet this shaft uh, and I made the symmetric thread so this goes in like this and what what was interesting about doing this was uh, I originally saw this kit in an Adam Savage video uh, and I'm pretty sure he got these components the wrong way round <laughs> uh, the design very specifically has you uh, machine these up bore through the hole and then trim a little off of the inside ledge so that when the uh, nut screws on it pulls it tightly uh, an offset just enough like you can't over tighten it but it uh, it just has just enough to be able to squeeze on the main uh, arm so this goes here and that is a nice I was really happy actually this is probably one of the best fits uh, that shaft in there is beautiful then we have one of the two handles uh, as you'll have seen I use the mill and the DRO to create the notches uh, and sort of did both handles at the same time essentially and then uh, cut this off and so this guy tightens on there like that. I see. What we then have is the main fixed jaw, pretty straightforward. Um, this bar came essentially to diameter anyway, so all I had to do is chamfer a little off the base and put a thread on the end into the block. The block is relatively complicated. You have these holes, one smooth bore and one threaded, plus the connectors to the fixed jaw. Um, in theory, when this guy tightens up, there's just a little bit of a turn that is enough to lock that all together, uh, which is quite, quite a pleasing machining part. Now, it's not the strongest grip in the world, um, you can certainly overcome it, but um, this is really intended for light duty work. So then we get to this concoction, which is definitely where the rubber meets the road in this whole thing. Uh, this screw thread and this uh, rod need to be extremely parallel to each other in order to not bind up. So these holes have to be exactly the same. Um, diameter is or displacement as these um, this threaded rod was my first attempt single point threading between centers and I actually at the moment I've left that in place the the two ends I could probably should trim that off uh, but for now I've kind of left it a little over long uh, let's just give this dab of oil as well uh, now the uh, the main assembly and I guess what people mostly do is use some thread locker to attach this handle at that point I did that initially uh, but I found it, it uh, uh, and this is probably <laughs> compiling inaccuracies in my um, this inaugural attempt to machine anything precise um, I found it, it did bind a little bit and the thread locker I was using just wasn't really up to the task. So I actually just milled a little flat and then drilled a, a 4 mil hole and put a 4 mil grub screw in there uh, just to give me a little bit extra security. So this, uh, let's, I think I could probably do with, I'll just give a bit in there and a bit in there. So 
So I say I think generally speaking the action is pretty good. I can definitely feel there are occasions where it wants to resist. But overall see it's when you get really close that you you're fighting the most against those tolerances but jaws close nicely good alignment uh, I've already been using this for for doing some light filing work on my next project um, and yeah you can reposition obviously this is designed to be in a vice So yeah, it is a very pleasant pleasant mechanism. Uh, there's definitely something to be said for being able to put small parts. Uh, I was using it for small brass parts uh, that I just needed to file some radiuses on and say light duty. <laughs> and actually I think the fact that if you really try and go for it, this will lose its grip. It's probably a good thing because mostly this is about doing something a little bit more delicate and precise and not losing your patience. So there you go. That is the instrument vise. This was exactly the learning project I wanted it to be, needed to be. Uh, it is a tool I have started using, so what else can you say? Like That's the perfect result for me. Uh, both a great learning exercise and a useful end point. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.